So I came upon the, the city by accident. Uh, I was born and grew up in Georgia, but I've never been to that city, which is located right in the center. So my uh, co-screenwriter uh, showed me the photos, and at that time I was living in New York. And it was hard for me to believe that I didn't know about uh, this kind of space existing there. And I uh, went to visit the city, and I knew that I had to actually stay and do something. And uh, I moved because of that from New York to Georgia, and I spent the last three and a half years uh, basically in or around that city uh, making the film. So it was pretty much an accident, but uh, a lucky one. It happened uh, quite organically actually, uh, because when I tried to force the process, you know, by uh, having casting sessions, it didn't work out because everybody came prepared and it became very fake. Uh, everybody had an idea of what kind of film they wanted to be in themselves, so it didn't work out. And I had a chance to be in the city to live there for about six months. And about the end of, uh, you know, four months, I, again, I think it was a, a confluence of events. It was not an accident, but because I was looking uh, on purpose, but also it happened that uh, these people were in the same space as I was in, and they came to me, actually. And um, and it was very organic because I think they were the perfect. I, I didn't have any doubts. You know, they were the perfect. Uh, they they were the perfect part of the film in a way. So, and uh, the city itself is um, uh, is a character. Is a character. But I think any kind of art uh, without human beings or uh, not for human beings is not interesting for me. So. But as well, I, I hate the idea of having beautiful or stunning backdrops. It's not, the, the city is not a backdrop. It's a character that speaks. It's a character that has a meaning and participates in the film. You know, I didn't uh, plan anything specifically. Um, and actually, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just uh, the number of specific days that uh, I spent with them. And it wasn't anything planned that uh, on a specific day I would do something or I would ask them specifically something. Um, for, for about three years, I think, that the relationship continued. And even after three years, when we were almost done, I um, was able to find some things that uh, um, I thought were not, was not there before. And they were able to offer me more things and open up in a way that uh, they, they also thought that it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible before. So I was just there, you know, it was very important for me to understand, just to humanely relate to them. And I think they, they also felt that, that it, I, I was not in a hurry. I think most of the time, out of those three years, most of the time was spent just thinking and just being there and just talking to them. So I think they also understood, and at some point I just tell them, okay, I'm going to put the camera up and let's, you know. And at other times we would just talk and, and maybe drink and just talk about life. And I wouldn't turn on the camera, and some other times I would turn on the camera. So um, I didn't have a specific process because it was very important to, at every moment and every day, to understand how they feel at that moment. Because I didn't want to push, push anything. But because I spent so much time with them, they let me into their families. I knew, I knew a lot of details about their lives and I knew a lot of intimate details about their lives. So I was able to, in my head, have an, a picture of how I wanted to construct the film without telling them that we have to do this now, without telling them, without directing them. So uh, that was very important actually to find out and to have a detailed knowledge of their lives and uh, it just came through very gradually it just came through very slowly and it's very it was very important not to hurry and not to push not to push the uh, the process even now it's a little bit difficult for me to explain um, 
at the end of editing, um, we arrived at some uh, methodology that we understood that we had this methodology, but uh, a lot of the process was intuitive. And we understood that this is not a straightforward narrative film, and it's a film where um, uh, emotions accumulate from episode to episode. And so it was very important to listen to the material because it was so strong that we couldn't push it. Every time we pushed it and we forced it and we, um, we were violent with it in a way, it pushed back and it was very artificial. It, it didn't work. So uh, that we, we arrived uh, at a place where each character has a certain time and it's not a scene, but it's an episode. It's part of their lives. Um, and each episode accumulates some kind of emotion, but also emotional knowledge. So it's a process of accumulation from episode to episode, and you don't analy analytically get to another episode unless emotionally you're not ready for it. So we were waiting for the emotion to accumulate and for this episode to give some kind of birth, in a way. And uh, I think it's very important, uh, you know, when you're making this kind of film, not to uh, plan uh, anal analytically how you're going to construct the film, but to understand emotionally what kind of film it's, it's going to be. So all the, the sound, the audio, and, and, and the visual uh, decisions were based on that. So, you know, you, um, I didn't want, um, for example, any, to record any sound on location because it was very important to have that intimacy uh, between the characters to have as few people as possible. Sometimes even uh, my cinematographer or my assistant would leave and I would stay alone with, with the running camera. So it was you know, very important not to violate that kind of relationship. And also when you record something um, on location, it's almost impossible to shape the sound. It's almost impossible to filter out things that you hear and that are important in your perception for the film. So uh, that's why we went back after we finished the film and we recorded the sound, the specific sounds, and we recreated a lot of it in, um, uh, on the stage in post-production. And uh, editing-wise, uh, the editor um, lived, uh, we lived, uh, you know, we lived together in one house in, in Georgia. Um, and he came from Brazil and you know it was important for him to come rather than for me to go somewhere else. We went together to that city, he met the characters, we stayed there for a couple of days and, and then you know we spent about seven or eight months actually you know editing and playing with, with the material so.